In this video, we are going to go through exercises on lists in Haskell. The exercises work like this. At first, I will give you the description. Then you can pause the video and do this exercise. And after that, I will give you the solution to the exercise. So, okay, let's start. The first exercise. Create a function alum that returns true if an element is in a given list and returns false otherwise. Now, don't... Um, don't be discouraged. The type signature looks a bit weird. Um, the EQA is a so-called type class and we need it uh, for this function definition. Otherwise, we couldn't do a comparison. Uh, what a type class is, we will learn a bit later in this course. Okay, so pause the video now and please create such a function. Okay, I'm um, assuming that you have unpaused the video. So let's look at the solution. Now, this can be done with two pattern matchings. If we have an empty list, then the element we get is irrelevant, so we can use a wildcard, but we could have given this uh, variable a name if we, if we like. But giving it a wildcard really shows you within the code that whatever this value is, is irrelevant. And of course, an empty list doesn't have any elements, so we return false. And otherwise, we do this little Boolean operation where we say, well, if there is an element in it, so if there's an element X within the list, we compare it with E, and if they are uh, the same, then of course we have found this element, so we have to return true. We can do this with the uh, Boolean OR. Uh, you could have done this with um, an if statement saying if e equals x, then true else lm e x s. You could do it like that, but using the Boolean or is just nicer style in my opinion. Okay, exercise two. Create a function nub that removes all duplicates from a given list. It's important that it's irrelevant in what order you remove duplicates. There is a function nub and a function alum for that matter in the data.list module. Don't use them, make your own. Now, nub in the data.list module removes duplicates after it has found um, other, other variables. How you do it is irrelevant. You can do it however you like. You can remove whatever duplicates you like from that given list. The order is irrelevant for this task. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution. This can be done with two pattern matchings. Of course, if we have an empty list, then we return an empty list since there are no duplicates in it. And if we have some element x, uh, in the list, we check if it's an element in XS already. So then in this case, we would have a duplicate and we simply don't add it to our recursive call. Otherwise, we build a new list, um, X and the, or X prepended to the recursive result. This is the infix uh, syntax for the lm function. You could write it lm x x s and it would be the same. Okay, so let's look at exercise three. Create a function is asc that returns true if the list given to it is a list of ascending order, meaning that a list one two three four five is ascending, a list one two 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 three is also ascending, but a list like one two three three two one that is not ascending. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at a solution. This can be done with three patterns and those three patterns maybe look a bit weird because we haven't explicitly talked about the third pattern. Let's look at the first two. Well, if there are no elements in the list or if there's one element in the list, the list has to be of ascending order. But now we have this other um, pattern that we haven't, again, explicitly talked about. So what is this? Well, patterns and pattern matchings can be... Um, of a finitely recursive manner, let's call it that. So you can do a pattern like x, xs, but you can do that same pattern on xs again. Uh, so instead of writing x, xs, we can do x, y, xs. 
So what we have here is a list that has at least two elements in it and then, you know, some other list. Okay, so let's look at what we're doing here. We look at the first two elements of a list and then see if they are in an ascending order. If that is true, then we look at the recursive result of y-axis because we cannot look at the recursive result of access since we have to look at y and the next element in access. This function also could have been done with tail and head and some checking with null, uh, but it's a bit more complicated. This pattern makes it much easier. For the last exercise, we want to look at directed graphs. Uh, those directed graphs are encoded as a list of int tuples. So, for example, we have a list with the tuple two, 1, 2 in it. This means that we have the nodes 1 and 2, and we have a directed edge going from 1 to 2. Now, for this exercise, we implicitly think of a graph that has all the nodes in it that exist, so you never have to check if a certain node exists or not. Also for this exercise, we're interested in paths. So we are interested, for example, does there exist a path going from 1 to 3? In this case, yes, it does. And does there exist a path going from two to, uh, 4 to 2? Well, yes, it does. But there is no path going from 4 to 1, since the only edge connecting 1 and 2 uh, has the uh, wrong direction. So, okay. The exercise is the following. Create a function has path that determines if a path from one node to another exists within a directed graph. The function, as its first argument, gets a list of the edges, then the starting node, then the end node, and it should return true if there is a path and false if there isn't. Again, you do not have to check if a node is within this list of edges or not. We just implicitly think about it in a way where we say, well, every node that we look at also exists. Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the solution. The general idea of this solution is the following. We start at the starting node. We then uh, take all the edges that we can. So we look at all the reachable nodes from this one node. We delete all of the edges that we just looked at. Uh, this is done in order um, to not have infinite recursion if there are loops within the graph. And after we did that, we start a new search from every reachable node that we looked at. So let's look at uh, how this is done in the implementation. The first pattern... Uh, is very simple. If we have no edges anymore to look at, we just have to check if the starting node is the end node. The same goes for the case where we have edges, because in this case, we want to look at, well, is the starting node already the end node? In this case, yes, there exists a path. And otherwise, we do this recursive search. First, we prepare a new list of edges called XS prime. And access prime is defined as the following. It's all the tuples from access where n does not equal x. So what are we doing here? Well, again, we are looking at all the reachable nodes going from x. So we have to delete all of the edges we just took. Again, we do this so that if there are any cycles in the graph, this wouldn't be a problem. Okay, then we create a new list uh, out of all the recursive calls to has path on uh, this new list access prime with a new starting node. And the starting node is determined by the same tuples that we just removed. The tuples were n equals x. So those are the edges where we start at x and then end up at a certain other node. We call this node M and we start a new recursive search here. Now, if any of these searches returns true, then we found a path. So we OR the whole list because this would be a list of booleans. So we OR the whole list. We do a logical OR on this whole list so that if any of these searches returns true, 
we return true in the end. Now, there are other solutions for this uh, function. There are actually many solutions. Um, this may be a bit more a condensed version where we also use some list comprehensions, uh, let bindings, the OR function that we already looked at. But if you have another solution, uh, please write a comment. And if you find any suggestions, if you, if you have found a better implementation for any of these functions, uh, please share them in the comments. It would be interesting to look at them. Okay, see you next time.